Most of us probably started making videos with one of these, except it probably looked a little less like this and a little more like one of these things. Over the years, these things have got way better. I've gone through so many of these smartphone cameras before I actually bought what was my first camera, my first GoPro. In fact, I bought two of these because the first one I lost a couple of weeks after I bought it in a lake. I strongly feel that this camera made me more adventurous because now that I had the means to go and capture certain things underwater or in precarious places, I, I wanted to actually go and try those things. I now had the means to create something that I couldn't have made before because I had a new bit of equipment. My first proper camera was this, the Nikon D3500. I bought this thing because in my head I decided that I wanted to actually try give photography and videography a proper go for work. Unfortunately, I didn't know at the time this thing has a terrible inbuilt mic and you can't supplement it with anything else. I was gutted. But what this camera did do for me was introduce me to how cameras work, the shallow depth of field that you get from differing apertures, shutter speed, how frames per second works, things that I didn't know beforehand that now I had access to because I was using an actual DSLR. So as much as I might moan about it, this camera is what got me started learning filmmaking. But because of the obvious issues, I quickly upgraded from this and bought something that was a lot more substantial for what I wanted to do. Most of the videos that you've seen me film will have been shot on this, the Sony a7 III. This camera has been with me through pretty much every little film that I've made for the Tom Benson channel. It has more than paid for itself through business and also just pure enjoyment. It's been great. But recently it broke. And not that it's relevant to cameras, but to make matters worse, this week my van also broke. Now I've got filmmaking jobs booked in and I need a reliable camera that I can depend on to capture good audio as well as video and sadly as good as this thing has been it's no longer something I can depend on. Which I guess leads me to the point of this video. So there are a few things with this camera that I want to try out that I didn't previously have on my a7 III. One of them is that this camera's got like a steady shot function in it so that if I'm moving quickly it doesn't shake the screen around quite so much which I think is going to be really useful for the sorts of filmmaking that I do. It also has 10-bit colour which means that I can safely use log as a picture profile which I've not been able to do before either. The Sony a7 III had it but with 8-bit colour it was kind of a non-starter. And the other thing this camera's got is that it's capable of maintaining 4K resolution if I bump the frames per second up past 24. I've got either 60 or 120. So now if I want to do slow-mo I don't have to drop down to HD which that's going to be nice. I don't have to lose resolution anymore. At this point, I realized that I'd left my drone at home. So I gave my camera to Shah to look after while I ran back to get it. And of course, she took this as an opportunity to take the mick out of me. Suddenly, the world I used to know, I see it differently. You woke me from a dream, now here's reality. Baby, baby, you are really hurting me. I mean, it's just a little bit insulting, really, isn't it? This is what she thinks that I do. I'm wearing way too many clothes to be jogging. It's minus one and I've got a sweat on. I feel like it's time to try out the steady shot with a bit of running. Shah, can you, if you film and run behind me, can we do that? Let's see how, let's see if this works. So running with the camera is still pretty bumpy. Fair enough, maybe it's not meant for that level of movement. So I think instead we'll try maybe me running past and you sort of like sidestepping along a little bit, but more slowly, I don't know. We'll, we'll see if that works. Well, I mean, it definitely does something. It does something, it's not as jittery as ordinary footage, I, I know that for sure. But I think 
maybe just time to have a bit of fun flying the drone before we go back. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I've only, you know what I've gone and done? I had to run back before because I forgot the drone in the first place. I've left the batteries at home. This week's just not going my way, is it? My van's broke. <laughs> my old camera broke. Sometimes things just don't go to plan. It's just so frustrating. I'm so frust I'm so angry at myself. I ran back to get it for nothing. For, for nothing. Oh, I'm gonna get these things pinched by as well. That'd just be that'd be the perfect end to this vlog, wouldn't it? I ain't got nothing. I'm all out of food, I'm afraid. You know, for all that today hasn't actually gone very much how I thought it would, or this week for that matter, it really is quite nice to have somewhere this beautiful just on our doorstep, isn't it? Yeah. It is nice getting to use a new camera and learn all the new features and test out all the things that you can now do, how that might help you expand what you can make, but it gets me thinking about how if I'd have had this right at the start, I don't think I would have known what to do with it. It would have been far too complicated for me to understand how to use. I guess in a way, even though this is definitely the best camera I've ever had, I kind of am grateful for the older ones. I think ultimately what you get out of a camera is more down to what you know than it is what the camera's like, I think. I know that's very rich me saying that now, I've just bought a new camera, but yeah. <laughs> you can get into a, a bit of a trap of thinking that unless you buy a new piece of equipment, you won't be able to progress with what you're making. As I've been starting to build the Tom Benson Films business, I've certainly bought my fair share of different bits of filmmaking equipment to try and increase what I can do and what I can offer to other people if I'm making them videos. But as, as time goes on and the more you learn about your craft, the more you look back at those older pieces of technology that you used to use and realize that they weren't as useless as what you thought they were. You just didn't know what you know now. I remember when I first realized that I couldn't record audio on this Nikon camera. I, I was fuming. I, I just paid out what was to me a, a lot of money to buy something that I thought was gonna get me started on the pathway to a, a good job. And I basically just hadn't done my due diligence with researching it. But as much as this camera has its problems and audio is gonna be something that I'm gonna to have to think outside of the box for, I know full well that I can make something good with this. I just didn't know how to when I got it. So as much as I am now happily the owner of a new camera, this really cool cinematic vlogging camera that I can't wait to start using, part of me also wants to revisit some of the older stuff to just see how much can I get out of something that I previously considered to be a bit bit rubbish. I guess we'll find that out in the next video because I'm lending this to a friend who wants to learn to use cameras and he's gonna need some way to sort of get on the track to learning how to use it. So maybe I can help out with that. But in conclusion, new cameras are great, <laughs> but don't, I, I don't know, they're not always necessary. See what you can do with what you have. I'll see you in the next one.